A feature introduced in MQ version 6 was the traceroute capability. The purpose of this is to allow you to track the path a message takes through a queue manager network. While it doesn't answer the question, where is my message, it does allow you to answer the question, where would my message go if I sent it now? Along with the route, it also shows timing information so you can do things like look at latency. You can use this directly in applications by setting the correct flags when messages are put, or you can use the dispmq root command provided with the product. But here we'll be showing the easiest method, which is the traceroute plugin for the Explorer. The code I'll be using in this video is from MS0P version 7103. Older versions have got the same function but look slightly different. The first example selects the traceroute option for a queue. Because this is a remote queue definition, the path is shown through the channels and onto the final target queue. The message has been successfully delivered and immediately deleted, and we can see that it happened very quickly. The delivered indication is the important one to show successful processing to a real end queue. If there are errors, then the reports will show information up to the error point and no further. All responses are expected within a timeout period, which by default is three seconds, but configurable in the plugin's preferences panel. The next example shows what happens when there's another kind of error. In this case, the alias queue has been incorrectly defined and messages can't be put to it. As well as traditional queues and channels, Traceroute works very well with clusters. This configuration has got three queue managers in a cluster, and I'm going to demonstrate a number of aspects of this setup. First, I'm going to make sure that a queue that is only defined on QMC is accessible from QMA. This queue isn't defined to the cluster. Entering both the queue and queue manager name in the panel, MQ will use standard path resolution to try to reach that queue. In this case, it's going to use cluster channels, but it would also work with sender receiver channels and default transmission queues if they were defined. In the next example, queue.cluster.single is defined only on QMC, but advertised in the cluster. So when I try to put to that queue on QMA, it will be discovered and sent through the cluster to the correct location. We now try to put to a queue that is defined on all three queue managers in the cluster. The route that this particular message has taken is to the same queue manager. It's been delivered to QMA. But when I hit the refresh button to retest the operation, you can see that it's now been sent to QMB, and a further refresh sends it to QMC. This gives us the opportunity to check the workload distribution within a cluster. By sending 10 messages to the same queue, it's possible to see if they are suitably partitioned. And the graph shows as even as split as you can get with 10 messages. And that's the end of this demonstration of the traceroute function within MS0P. <laughs>